Spanish Foreign Minister, Jose Manuel Alvarez. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on Bloomberg. My and thanks so much. And obviously, I know you're busy and I know you're prepping for next week, which is going to be a huge week for diplomacy. We have the NATO meetings. And my question to you is very simple. What's going to happen with Ukraine and what's going to happen with Sweden? Will they finally get into NATO? We will have to discuss on the table in, in Vilnius, but the mood in which Spain is going is we have to move from what was already agreed in the summit in Bucharest concerning Ukraine. We have to show unity, as we are doing also in European Union. NATO has to show unity, as we have been doing since the beginning of the Russian aggression. And I hope that Vilnius will be the end point for the accession of Sweden to NATO. And, and can I ask you, however, you say we need to move past Bucharest, and the Ukrainians will agree, and they say that was a mistake, that we were not given a real perspective. The Ukrainians say by the end of the summit, we want a sentence that says when the war is over, Ukraine will join. Will they get that sentence, in your opinion? You, you must know the, the mood in the room at this point. It's not up only to Spain. There are all the other countries okay around. But we, we are moving. We are moving towards that, and I'm sure that the wording will capture that sense. And there are many other things that we are going to do. The, the, there is the NATO-Ukraine Council, in which Ukraine will sit on equal footing with all the NATO members. We can help Ukraine to move from a sort of Soviet army to a NATO-compatible army. There are many things, I'm sure, that we'll get out of that summit. And, of course, there's been a lot of talk, too, about uh, the Israeli model for Ukraine, this promise over time. But, again, what I pick up from you is that the actual consensus, this is still in the works. As it stands right now, we don't really know what will happen in the Vilnius summit. The, the wording is still being debated. We are still working on the wording, which is normal. There are still mm -hmm. many days to go. It's a very serious subject. Yes. But I can speak on behalf of Spain and definitely Spain, and I'm not the only country uh, that will be on the table that thinks like that, is that it was clear what we said in Bucharest, uh, Ukraine one day will be a member of NATO. Now we have to move forward and show a path. And the same applies to the European Union? The Spanish perspective is that you support Ukraine Ab entering the absolutely. European Union? Absolutely. There is a status of candidacy that has made by consensus. And Spain, of course, will foster as much as possible that path. Uh, we are waiting for the opinion of the Commission that will be out in October. As soon as it is, Spain, as presidency, will move forward as much as possible. Of the European Union. So you, you believe accession talks this year for Ukraine is, is a possibility? It's a possibility. It's more than a possibility. It might be uh, one of the things that during our presidency, if we count that the opinion of the Commission will mm -hmm. be out around the month of October, from there on, I cannot speak on behalf of Commission. I will have to, to wait and see what is there, but if they meet the expectation, that's a possibility, definitely. And now let's go back in time to the NATO summit in Madrid, which you hosted uh, last year. I remember you and I spoke at the time, and that was a flurry of diplomacy. But one of the things that you managed to do was to get Erdogan of Turkey, the Swedish and the Finnish in the same place with the Secretary General and get that OK to enter NATO. What we know now is that the Finland or Finnish are now a member of NATO, but Sweden finds itself in a very difficult position. It seems they're in no man's land at this point. Will they finally get the OK from Erdogan next week? I hope so. Spain has already ratified the treaty on bilaterally, so Sweden can join. Uh, all the security concerns of all the NATO member countries must be met. Also, the security concerns of Turkey. But as far as I know, things are moving well. Things are advancing well, and the bilateral dialogue between Sweden and Turkey is going well. My wish, the wish of Spain, is that Vilnius will be the moment in which we will have uh, Sweden definitely within the family. So you say, at least from the Spanish perspective, our, our position is clear. Sweden has to join, and, and that is it. Absolutely. And, and I wonder, however, because, again, going back to Madrid, you were there where Erdogan was the star of the show. Everyone had eyes uh, on Erdogan. Is this a tactic that he, that he plays? Is this real concerns that he may have? Is there an understanding that you can get to in what is now days 
before that summit starts on, on the Tuesday. Turkey doesn't oppose to the accession of Sweden. Otherwise, it would have put a veto to even uh, yes. signing the. So that's the important thing. They are not opposed to the accession. There are some security concerns that must be uh, from the side of Turkey that must be met. And this is a matter of the bilateral dialogue between Turkey and Sweden. And things are going well. So I'm confident that it will be the end point or the beginning of the end point. And the NATO Secretary General, who has been extended for another year, is Stoltenberg. He repeated that message that he hopes this is finally uh, completed and that security of the Nordics also uh, completed. From the Nordics, however, I want to go to China. When I say China, what do you think of? Is this a friend? Is this a, a rival? Is this no decouple? But yes, major de-risk? What does that mean to you? It's a big power, and we have to mm -hmm. count on it. It's a big power from a military point of yes. view, from an economic point of view, from a population point of view. And there are global challenges that we will not be able to meet without China. Climate change, just to put the most important one. We are in a dialogue that is a very open and frank dialogue with China. On trade, we want an, an, an leverage and an and equal uh, footing for uh, everything concerning for trade. And every time what we have met with the Chinese authority, we have asked them to use their influence on Russia and very specifically on Vladimir Putin to bring peace back And to are Ukraine. they doing that? Because a lot of people say no. If Xi Jinping wanted to mediate, he would have done it already. It's wishful thinking. It's very important to count on them. And they have always wanted to engage with us every time we have raised the conversation. So I would say they are in good faith. And what about your relationships then with uh, the U.S.? Uh, again, they, they talk about this is the, the tightest we've ever been, but we've seen trade relations at times where obviously they want made in America and you want made in Europe. How do you see this partnership going? Also, because there's an election next year. That's the elephant in the room. Let's, let's be clear. Could be the return of Trump. The United States is the natural ally of European Union and Spain and the and United... the best ally? It's definitely our natural ally, and mm -hmm. we have been together through the toughest time of all our recent history. We are right now facing the threat of, of Russia uh, towards Ukraine and Europe. Uh, the president and myself, we were in the White House uh, May the 12th, and we were discussing all the issues around commune values. We are NATO allies. We have a Euro-Atlantic security and we share the same concern for climate change, for multilateralism, but that's Biden, for democracy. But that's with President Biden. What if, what if there isn't a, a repeat of the Biden presidency? Is that going to be a problem? It's up to the American citizens okay. to decide who is going to be their yeah. president. What I can tell you is that my government feels very comfortable with a government and an administration like Biden's administration, an administration that believes in multilateralism, that has brought the United States to the Paris Agreement, that is showing commitment to Euro-Atlantic security. And therefore, during the Spanish presidency, we will also foster that unity. And you talk about your government, you talk about the Spanish presidency, which you have at the end of the year, but you also have an election coming up. When I look at the macro indicators for Spain, you obviously are growing, inflation has majorly come down, and yet you're still trailing in polls. What is going on? Why, why is there a gap between your performance on the economics and the fact that you're not leading polls? The, the only polls that count is the final vote that, that will have And you take believe place. you're going to win it? That, that will, of course, that you will, will win take the place election. July 23rd. And as you say, the economy is boosting. We have 21 million of people affiliated to Social Security. It's a total historical record. But why isn't one it feeding the, more then? One of, just to give you some figures that are important, one of the lowest inflation. Uh, in, in Europe, a growth that is double uh, the medium average of, of European Union. And we are doing that, and at the same time, we are protecting people. We are increasing minimum wage. We are increasing pension rights, as it has never been done in, in, uh, during our history. And of course, there is a lot of noise, a lot of noise. Well, what do you mean by noise? Fake news. At personal attacks to the president. And the campaign, the political campaign that we are undergoing, is there to clarify, to explain, and to separate what is noise, fake news, from what are the real facts. And the real facts is that we are showing that we are managing well the economy and at the same time that we are protecting people as it needed facing the social and economic consequences of the Russian aggression to Ukraine. And just very briefly, though, if you do get a government that is conservative and includes Vox, 
would you say this is the far right? In my view, it's the far right. Of course it's the far right. So the, Spain the, would have a far right government, in they, your view? They don't hide themselves. Because a lot of people don't believe that. They the don't, voters don't they seem don't to believe They don't hide that. themselves. And they are things that are against the central part mm -hmm. of the European agenda, as biodiversity and climate change, equality, LGBTQ rights, things that are essential, that are around the main part of the green agenda of Europe, and also that are the core values of the European construction. Um, well, thank you so much. And you made it clear that you do believe uh, the Spanish Socialist Party will win the election. I'll be in Madrid. So we'll, if you win, you have to do an interview with us. I will. From the steps Definitely of the will. Congress. Well, <laughs> José Manuel Vares, thank you so much. Of course, thank Spanish you. Foreign Minister, thank you. Always a pleasure to seeing you uh, on Bloomberg.